atmospheric circulation that takes place at three levels. One is what is called as the primary circulation. At a second level, at the second level of hierarchy lies the secondary circulation. At the third level, the circulation goes on to be called as tertiary circulation. Temperate cyclones are part of a secondary circulation. Temperate cyclones are also called as mid-latitude depressions, extra-tropical cyclones, mid-latitude because they occur in mid-latitudes, 45 degree latitude, extra-tropical because they are away from the tropical region, frontal depressions because they go on to generate themselves from fronts and their depressions. Depressions in the sense they are low pressure systems and wave cyclones. Wave cyclones go on to mean that is they go on to take the form of wave. In India, it is these temperate cyclones that are called by the name of Western Disturbances. According to the polar front theory, cyclones or depressions form where a wave develops on the polar front. Temperate cyclones form where tropical and polar areas air masses meet and then converge. Tropical air mass is hot while the polar air mass is cold. When warm and cold air masses blow paddle to each other, the boundary line of convergence separating two air masses is termed as a front. When the dominant action is performed by the warm air because it goes on to rise over it, it's called as a warm front. And when the dominant action is performed by the cold air which causes it to move forward, upward is going to be called as cold front. According to the polar front theory, as the cold air is deflected equator ward and the warm tropical air pole ward, a cyclone forming wave is formed along the front. As the wave develops, the accent of warm air along the warm front results in condensation, cloud formation and precipitation, jet stream theory. Upper air observations have made it clear that other processes frequently lead to formation of cyclones without the existence of fronts. That means that it's not essential that a front first forms. Maybe there are other processes that go on to form, not exactly the fronts. Once the cyclone forming process is underway, it gives rise to front formation within a cyclone. That is, once the cyclone forming process is underway, that means that there was a low pressure and it was this low pressure that got itself intensified up. An intensification of this low pressure has given rise to formation of a cyclone. One that produced low pressure centre at lower level and subsequently may draw air masses together leading to formation of fronts. Such convergence forces air to rise. So what happens first is that is a, a low pressure goes into form. This low pressure that as it goes on to form, it goes on to draw air from different sides. As it goes on to draw air from different sides, then the draw of this air from different sides allows the formation of a front and then that convergence forces the air to rise. And then that goes on to create instability. Instability induces the rise of warm air aided by the divergence and upliftment by the jet stream. Now whole process goes on to be clear. After the forms fronts are formed, further development resembles the life cycle enunciated in the polar front theory. The air that finally rises upwards is sucked by the jet stream because uh, there will be a formation of a front. Cold front will go on to move, move close with the warm front. That is how the cold front is moving and closing with the warm front. So the air has been lifted upwards and as this air is lifted it is sucked by the jet stream which rises gradually and in the process leads to formation of precipitation. The air rises spirally. This air rises spirally because of the Coriolis force and is withdrawn by the jet stream. The entire of the cyclonic system moves eastward with the jet stream. That is the whole of this system starts moving eastward from west to east. This is the reason that western disturbances that India experiences eh, moves from west to east. Eh. They first come to, to Iran, they first come to western Europe, then to Iran, then to Afghanistan, then to Pakistan, then to India, then they go on to go to China. So this is the way, this is the tract through which the western depressions in India go on to move. 
Second part is associated with the weather phenomena associated with depressions or temperate cyclones. Warm fronts typically have slopes of less than 1 in 100 and thus the ascent of the air, ascent of the air at the warm front is gradual provided warm air does not become unstable and that will go on to lead to formation of stratiform clouds. The approach of the cold front brings a marked change in the weather. The slope of the cold front is perhaps 1 in 50 because the pushing cold air is under the warm air. The slope is greater near the surface where the front's progress is being retarded by friction. High instability leads to towering cumulonimbus clouds and heavy precipitation in the form of thunder showers. If we have to talk about what are the weather conditions that are associated with the passage of a warm front and then a cold front. What happens is, first there is a warm front, then there is a warm sector and then there is a cold front. The first sign of an approaching warm front is going to be cirrus clouds, then alto stratus cloud, alto cumulus clouds, nimbus stratus clouds, so rains will be there. Once the warm front has passed, the weather becomes clear. It is warm, it's stunning. Thereafter, it will be followed by a cold front. Now, cold front is a, the formation of a cold front is heralded by a towering cumulonimbus cloud which will go to have a slanting base, not a flat base normally. So that is going to be the passage. Once one of these warm front, then warm sector, cold front passes, it will be time for another one. That is in short about how the temperate cyclones form, what are depressions, how do they function and how do they work.